Hello. Critical Role is a beast. Welcome to my channel. My name is Natasha and I am a big noid. I like to play D&D and I like to watch Critical Role and you're probably here because you saw the title and you went, hmm, I'd like to watch Critical Role as well. How do I start? Well, that's a loaded question, my friend. You see, Critical Role has three campaigns and that doesn't include any of the one shots. That doesn't include the books and the comics and the animated series. It's a lot. So if you want to start from the beginning, I have heard it is a very good place to start. Campaign one of Critical Role, also known as the Vox Machina arc, is where they started. It was a campaign that they had already been playing off stream. What are you doing? I'm, I'm playing Dungeons and Dragons. Nerd! For a couple of years, actually playing it with Pathfinder, and then when um, 5e came out, they converted it. When you start from campaign one, the thing is, is that the sound isn't great because they're starting from the beginning. Welcome to the first episode of Critical Role. The visuals are not great. Sometimes, you know, it gets distorted and stuff. And you're also being smack dab in the middle of a campaign because like I said, they'd already been playing for a couple of years. So you kind of have to like learn the characters as they go. They already have like all these relationships built and inside jokes. That bothers a lot of people. Personally, I don't, I actually started from the beginning. I literally started watching episode like two when it first aired and it didn't bother me because I also had nothing else to compare it to. Now, a lot of people who have watched newer stuff and they go back, it bothers them, especially people who have like any kind of sensory issues. So if you want to start from the beginning, just be aware of some of these things. There's also a character named Tiberius, which causes a lot of like controversy and stuff. If you want to start with Box Machina, but you're not exactly into like all of those issues, I suggest that you actually start by watching the animated series that was on Amazon. All it takes is a little finesse. They actually have two seasons right now and they do cover the Vox Machina arc and they intend to cover the entire thing. Right now they're in the middle of Chroma Conclave, which is like, you know, episodes in the 50s. Um, so if you wanted to start with the animated series and then jump into the stream, that'd be cool because then you actually will, they're already kind of more established at that point. It sounds better, but there are some great things about starting from the beginning. They don't know what they're doing and it's kind of adorable. You get to watch them learn. You get to see them really get excited when like, you know, the fans buy them pizza. It's ah! into row or wow! Oh, Holy, you guys! Shit. Like you see their humble beginnings and then you see where they become in you know, this huge behemoth of a company. But watching them from the beginning, it's actually kind of sweet. So it's up to you if that's something that you like. Now, if you want to start right from the beginning with characters that are brand new, these people don't know each other, they meet in a tavern and then they go on an adventure, I highly suggest that you actually start from campaign two. That's what the Mighty Nine, now campaign two, <laughs> is when they've been very established. They already have a company. They've already kind of left their original streaming company at this point-ish. I don't know. Was it? Doesn't matter. Um, but the characters of the Mighty Nine actually do literally, like the cliche, meet in a tavern. I've seen plenty of friends get in fights in pubs. And they go on their adventure and you follow them from the beginning to the end of their arc. And it is really exciting. And you don't need to know anything really about campaign one. So just jump into campaign two. These characters don't know each other from campaign one. Mighty Nine are separate. The super fun campaign. And um, the only thing, because everything has to have a negative, is that um, towards the end of the campaign is actually when the panini started to happen. And so lockdown and all that did really affect the campaign. They actually wrapped it up probably a little earlier than they probably would have because they had to play six feet away from each other <laughs> for the LA, um, like protocols of doing productions. I miss you guys so much. Oh, <laughs> man. Oh, man. Uh, miss you guys so much. It does miss a little bit of that magic. They slowly do get it back together, but it does end a little abruptly. So um, that does cause a bit of a shift towards the end. Now, if you see that there's a whole bunch of content and you're just like, uh, that's a lot. You can start with campaign three. Campaign three is actually happening right now. They're only like on episode 50 something. And so it's easier to catch up on. The episodes, like all the other episodes of um, Critical Role can range between three to five hours but they also are starting from the beginning and you can start from the beginning there. The only problem is, cause like everything has a problem, campaign three does rely you knowing a lot about campaign one and campaign two. There's a lot of characters and storylines and plots and even a BBEG that take reference from those campaigns. So you may be a little lost. You see a masked figure with- Shut the fuck up! 
Now, if you're just one of those people that doesn't care about that kind of stuff and you like to learn as you go, then just join in on Campaign 3. It's a lot of fun. We're learning these new characters and they're very established. They have their own set. They have their own company. They have their own animated series. I mean, like, they really picked up by the time they're in Campaign 3. And they're even starting to slowly detach from D&D by making their own kind of, um, I guess, terminology and gods, etc. Now, if you just want to, like, know how to catch up, with the Mighty Nine, they actually did an animated, like, little chibi series on their Critical Role channel on YouTube. Oh, Mighty Nine. They also have Danny Carr's recaps of every episode. The, the beginning one, she actually um, would, like, record and film them. And then the later one, she actually just writes these long descriptions. There's also um, Crit Roll Stats, I believe, that um, gives you huge descriptions and a bunch of other websites that will actually help you catch up. There's comic books, there's books, there's um, just a whole lot that you can get extra content without having to actually sit and watch the whole episodes. There's also people to full-on clip compilations, Nico Nielsen, to T. T.P. Burrow, uh, Marisha Reagan. I mean, there's a lot of other channels on YouTube that do that. So it's weird that it's a little complicated of where do you start with Critical Role. But like I said, it's a beast. Me personally, I say start from the beginning if it doesn't bother you with all the sounds and the weird glitches and stuff like that, because it's amazing to see where they started from and where they are now. So let me know what you think. Where did you start or where are you gonna start? So give us a like if you like corgis, cause look at that. Look at that little floopy right there. See you later. There. Oh!